I'm Carolyn. And I'm Kate. And this is our weekly gab. This week, we touch on the Summer House reunion, and we have some hot takes on West Wilson. Hot. Since you all commented that you loved it, that we talked about the challenge last week, we dive deep into whether or not we're Team Johnny Bananas or Team Sarah after the Crazy Rivals 3 finale. There is also more Billy Lee drama, and this time Kyle Chan and Victoria Lee Robinson are in the group chat about it. <laughs> We've got the tea, and it's juicy. And my husband is trying to become an international DJ and knows nothing about music. <laughs> Welcome to the Weekly Gab! Let's get into it. Woo! Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Girls Unscripted. We're your hosts. I'm Carolyn. I'm Carolyn. And she is also Carolyn. Welcome to the Matrix. <laughs> I wanted to try and get you, but you just played it off really well. Yes, and. I thought you were going to like stutter a little bit, and you didn't. You were just like, everybody wants to fucking be me. I get it. Yeah. All right. I'm Kate, and this is our weekly gab. gab. And you know what? I was thinking about this today, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. Every time we record I feel like I always and this m might just be a me thing mm -hmm. I always start off a little low energy because okay. it's like you know we start we record at like six o'clock yeah on a Tuesday on a Wednesday yeah. so I feel like I want us all even the listeners to just take a big deep breath and then I'm gonna let it out what does that mean whatever happens happens okay okay, okay I like this <laughs> is it what is it like in and then out yeah, whatever ready? happens <laughs> you really left me stranded there, Kate. I thought well, you were gonna. I let, thought my letting it I out. I thought my was gonna be crazy, yep. and then you just really <laughs> went for it. That was the tamest let out I've uh, ever seen. In my life. I just needed to do something. Well, you know, I wanted to get the lips. I'm like, I'm getting ready for the episode. <laughs> Do re mi fa do. Getting exercised over here. See, I slapped my, slapped my face a little bit. <laughs> Woo, let's do this. Let's fucking gab, baby. Let's fucking gab. I see, that was for me. That was. All right, well, this is our weekly gab. If you were here last week, you'll know this is a new thing that we've been doing where we're just going to talk about shit that's been going down in reality TV because there's so much to talk about. I was just going to say, every week, it's there's something else. Even when shows aren't airing, man, does shit go down. But we're also going to do a little personal gab. Yeah. And I would like to know, how are you? <laughs> Tell me something about yourself. How are you? Let's hold hands while we talk about this. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't, I don't like, like it at all. I'm not a big I don't toucher. Like it. I think I am a toucher, but sometimes I just get overwhelmed. Like I like will hug a friend. Like that's fine, but it's like I have a lot of girlfriends that like will hold hands with their girlfriends, but there aren't like I don't really yeah, do that. Like Rachel and I will hold hands. Yeah, yeah. Ra Rachel is a hand holder. She's a good hand holder. Or like like I have friends that like they'll like cuddle and like watch movies together and I'm like that's just oh, not for me yeah I mean yeah it depends on the day what's your gabity do you have any gabity this week I don't really have much except that my husband has decided that he wants to be an international DJ <gasps> and I know it's really exciting oh and wait for it he's uh he has a name it's Fox not DJ Fox just Fox he has a logo. Is it because he's he a cannot silver make, fox? Yes. That's yes. good. Yes. Apparently at Harvard, they all like called him the silver fox. He's, he's fox. And we want to lean into the white hair. And Jono is like the wolf, isn't he? So yes, I'm, our friend Jono is the really wolf. I think it'll really line up well. <laughs> Carolyn, that's so good. But here's the only thing. He doesn't know how to make music. He can learn. He's learning now. Does he have a little uh, DJ deck? He does. He does. I haven't seen the DJ deck come out yet. He's like taking master classes right now. Oh, wow. Good for him. Oh, yeah. He's like all in. That's so funny. So, But like he's keeping his job. This is just like the most LA shit ever. So my boyfriend also DJs. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't think he's quite on the international circuit yet. Very local. Well, we're not either. Well, you will be. I, you know what? If there's one thing I know about Kyle, a.k.a. Fox, he will be an international DJ, which is funny because isn't Kyle Cook also trying to be a DJ from Summer House? Probably. I wonder what his DJ name is. I just, well, don't take Fox. It, look, Fox is good. Just Fox. It's F. Okay. F. O X X, but the O has like the little slash thing to, through it, Ooh, nice. which is funny because technically it's pronounced like Fuchs. 
Which oh, also wait, that's sounds even like better. fucks. That's even better. Which is funny. That's even better. So it's even better. You're just blowing me away. Yeah. So yeah, Dan, his DJ name is Short Dance. <laughs> wait, Short Dads? Plural, yes. Short Dads. Short he dads. is he is the short dads like yes <laughs> he may, i don't get it like i think it was like a name he saw they it have was like, to be best friends i think it was <laughs> like i know they have friends. so much in common <laughs> i think it was like some instagram account or something he saw that was funny and like I, I don't know it's just short dads and when i first heard it i'm like that's like a really weird name but now it it, it does make sense but i'm obsessed with that he has the decks <laughs> and one night we were bored and he like brought him out and like kind of taught me like how to transition. Oh, it fun. was so fucking fun. I and I said, Dan, when we move in together, like I want you to teach me how to use that. I told Kyle, I was like, I want to learn basics. Well, because I want to do a night where it is just like music from 2008 to like 2015. Like I mm-hmm. want to listen to like dancing in the dark. Bah, 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 oh, bah, you're talking. Like, you know that our song? wedding playlist yeah, was like, that. I want old school fucking bangers. I, should- I will play levels more than once. Oh God, don't get me started on levels. Like, why don't they play that stuff anymore? I don't know. It was the golden age. I was it's funny because I was looking on Spotify and like a playlist, like Spotify put playlist came up that says the golden age of EDM was 2014. That's that's not true. I've heard that. I think it's 2012. I mean, it's just because that's when I graduated. So I think that's where everything revolves around me. I do think whenever you were in college or whenever you had like your partying You're like, that's stage, when it peaked. You were like, that was the best music. That, that's when music like couldn't have gotten any better. Because your nostalgia. Like, yeah. I do get that. But Levels is also, I think that's debatably epic. Levels is quite possibly the greatest song ever created. Yeah, like of all time. Also, oh. I mean, this just brings us back to when you and I were at Coachella and like Kid Cudi did like the Pursuit of Happiness remix. Like there's just so before much. Before he fell off the stage. Before he fell off the stage. Hope he's okay. Hope he's fine. Haven't heard an update. Sending. He hasn't texted me. Kid, if you're listening. <laughs> Kid, give us an update. Please let us know. But no, we, I'll send you our wedding playlist because Kyle. I would love that. It's like the one thing Kyle did for our wedding. No, no offense, babe. I love you so much. You're my everything. But arguably one of the most important things. Normally we'd do a band, but he's such like a DJ guy. He was like, No. I want to, I want like music. And so he spent so long putting an album together, but a lot of it is like that era of music and it was pretty sick. Okay. Let me ask you this. So I am on Kyle's side. Yeah. I think a live band in a wedding is great when the band is good, but I've been to weddings where the band wasn't really that good. And mm-hmm. it, it kind of takes, it's risky. A band is risky. When you, did you guys just play it straight from Spotify no, or did we he have should like, have. we should have. So we got a DJ and he had spent he he got it hour by hour of like we're gonna start bigger like you know with where the older people will also enjoy it yeah. and then like get more niche as the night goes on yeah so it's like just turnt by the end <laughs> but she kind of did it all ma- mashed up and so he was really upset by that oh because that was gonna be what, what i was gonna ask of like because i also went to a wedding where they just played from spotify which did work mm-hmm. but you listen to like the mm-hmm. whole song and then you That's it doesn't true. really like transition into each other did you listen to ads we didn't listen to ads. <laughs> could you oh my god could you imagine just being at a wedding and then being like at 1-800 contact sky rizzy yeah <laughs> 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 yeah, it's like a really depressing. Like, if you have diarrhea, Plaque vomiting. <laughs> it's like, sorry, everybody. Just give us. I'm sorry. We're doing Pandora here. <laughs> Three minutes. We'll be back. Also, Pandora, the fallen music. Who oh, still yeah. listens? If anybody out there listens to Pandora, why? I bet it exists for some weird niche reason now. I'm sure people Someone. still listen. Like offices. Yeah. But there's ads, right? I will say, back in the day, I... I, I, don't, I think I've said this on here. I like made <laughs> on one of my many, many lives. I made internet videos for a, a software company and that <laughs> company like doesn't exist, but it does because they were the first of its kind. Okay. And it's really hard to get rid of everyone when you're the first to have fire. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like not everyone's going to un- un- not get a like uninstall Pandora. Right, right. When you that's just what they do. Totally. You know? What was the company? A real player. Maybe I'd have to see the logo. It was, you shouldn't know it. Like, it was the annoying thing on your computer that you couldn't undownload. You couldn't get it off your computer. Everyone hated it. I kind of feel like I know what you're talking about. And so about. they tried to pivot and they made this other product from a player cloud. I don't know if I'm breaking NDAs here. But they tried to pivot. I think this is all public. And so I was kind of like their flow for software for a minute. Wait, 
that I could see you doing that. It was really fun. We had a viral video with the me- that's where meme. Oh my god, meme hunters! Y'all go look at meme hunters. <laughs> It's so cringe, but away. hilarious. Yeah. I was like, how is there an audience here? And he was like, well, it was the first thing ever that could stream video. Think about that. On the internet, period. If you wanted a video wow. to play, you had to use Real Player. Wow. So billions of people had it. That is groundbreaking. So it, they still have like, I don't know, enough to keep the lights on. And you were on the ground floor. Well, of their, of their pivot of trying to. Oh, in the pivot. I think yes. it's, sorry, Real Player. Well. Hey, free promotion. It was fun. Like, Real yeah. player, if you like to sponsor <laughs> I us. No, I don't even think that product still exists anymore, but true. I will. It was a loving relationship. Oh, that is so funny. I don't know how we got here. I don't know, but I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm fine with it too. Your gab. I feel like that was our gab. That was our gab. You know what? I had a nice weekend, a fine weekend. I was stayed in some nights. I was drunk one nights. The funniest thing that happened to me this weekend was... I'm at Ralph. So me and my boyfriend, we stayed in on Friday night. We kind of needed a break. Okay. We had a big weekend last week in between my birthday and just all the shit. Oh, not a break between you two. Oh, no, 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 From no, doing no, no. things. We okay, actually, gotcha. we had a nice little quality time night. Love you know? that. It was very nice. Love that. So we were like drinking, drinking a little wine. And then Dan's like, do you want to go to Ralph's? And I just like wanted to do something. I'm like, yes. So we can walk to Ralph's. So we like brought a little, I brought a little water bottle of wine. You can walk wine. to Ralph's? Yeah, I'm I walked so to Ralph's. Jolly. So I brought a little water bottle of wine. <laughs> Isn't that just pitiful? Everyone that's listening that like doesn't live in LA or whatever, like you can walk to a grocery <laughs> store. To get to a Ralph's is like a 30 minute thing for me. There really isn't many Ralph's. It's no. like very inland in Santa Monica. Yeah. Yeah, I do know what you're talking about. Yeah. There's one. Well, I live in the burbs. Yeah. So I fill up like a li- I fill up like a little water bottle with wine, and I, t- I bring it to the Ralphs, and I'm in Ralphs, and I'm sipping on it. I'm like, I'm like scared. I'm like, this is so bad. There's a security guard right there, but like, I just felt like I was breaking you the like law. Like you were so naughty. I just needed to do something bad. Yeah, you know? you're a bad girl. So then bad, bad I go, girl. I go to walk down this aisle, and Dan's like, don't walk down that aisle. And I'm like, why? And there is like this guy walking down the aisle, and he's like, I just watched that guy shove three like uh <laughs> handles of vodka in his pants <laughs> and he's about to go steal it and i'm like what and he goes the security guard that's such a difficult thing to steal and he, yeah he was wearing, just wearing like sweatpants and he was like kate i swear to god i watched him put them in his i'm like well first of all i'm mad at you now because i would have liked to have seen that why didn't you tell me that's what you were watching one per leg one down the butt so is what he, I'm gonna and he had like a really he had just a lot of baggage goes on so he's like let's stand here and watch him like, oh do it I'm yeah like, that's okay fun. so we stand and we watch this security, is what you came to ralph's to do security guards on her phone and he just walks right out and i'm like and here i am so i was scared because i got a little bit of wine, wine in a sippy cup and i'm about to pay fucking 12 dollars for rolls of toilet paper oh man i admired it you you were bad for uh, you I, it's all relative i applaud life him. is on a scale when you Take the risk. There will be a payoff. So let that be a lesson to you guys. Steal. Steal from <laughs> no, the grocery no, 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 store. No, no, no. She Steal. If you think that. you can do it, you can she, do it. She gets carried away sometimes when she does get... <laughs> Sorry, you're we right. We do not promote stealing <laughs> light. If you do steal, steal light. Or don't don't put... You know what? Now we're getting off the rails. Three handles of vodka down your pants. It I was crazy. That's that's out, out of control. I've never stolen anything, I don't think. I've stolen a bottle of water once, but it was more like I was too tired to go back and pay for it. Mm. So I'm a bad girl too. Yeah. Real bad. Girls used to steal a lot when I was younger. Really? They used to steal little things from Kohl's. Coles. So the Coles was like the dip- cash. Coles cash. <laughs> Coles was like the big store in our town, so everybody stole from Coles. Last story from yet one of the million lives I've lived. I worked in an advertising agency in New York, and my, the client was J.C. Penney, and their competitor was Coles. And I did an internship there. And I kid you not, my job was to watch every Coles commercial, and I had a spreadsheet wow. to tally like how many sales for shirts there were, how many sales for hours. I watched four hours of Kohl's commercials well, yeah. in a row every day. You know what you probably watched and didn't even realize it? What? Tom Schwartz is in a, in a Kohl's commercial. Is he really? Yeah, I heard him talk about it on uh, a podcast, I think Vile Files. Oh, man. It's apparently very big for him. So we'll have to find it yeah, and yeah. I'll send it to you. Okay. Okay, so last episode, I want to start off with the results of gabity versus gabber yeah this is very interesting so last episode i love numbers so carolyn if there's one thing i know about her she loves data and here's where you go just so yeah i used to have a job as a data (laughs) analyst (laughs) 
I actually <laughs> crazy story. One more, more yeah. quick story. So I put on our story a poll for, on our Instagram story, and it said, "What name should we refer to our listeners as?" And the options were the Gabbities. So you'd say, "I'm a Gabbity," the Gabbers, "I'm a Gabber," or a hybrid of Gabbities as the plural and Gabbers as the singular. And here are the results. Drum roll, please. I'm going to do what you did earlier. Okay. That's pretty good. So coming in as the loser, you could th- you could stop the drum roll. Oh, you can stop I, the drum but roll. it goes all the way to the finish line. Oh, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, we're doing it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't turn back now. Don't. You wanted this. Coming in as the loser. This might sound like shit on the thing. Just say it. Just say it. All right. Coming in as the loser with 24% was the Gabbities. I'm a Gabbity. That's not that big of a loser, though. Then it was a really, really close race between the Gabbers or the hybrid. At 37% was the hybrid. At 39% was the Gabbers. So the Gabbers saying, like, I'm a Gabber was the winner. But that's just on Instagram. I know a lot of YouTubers like Gabbities. I think we feel like calling someone a gabber rolls off the tongue. And we also think that people don't care too horribly much that we could kind of interchange the gabbities or the gabbers, plural, and just see what happens. Like pick gabbers. Uh, yeah. I mean, well, you know, we'll just do whatever feels right. So, but here's what I wanted to tell you that I waited. It actually has to do with the DJ stuff. Okay. Kind of. So I, w- I started to tell Carolyn this and then I was like, you know what? No, I need to save it for the pot. So last night I asked Dan, my boyfriend... Which do you like better, Gabbities or Gabber? And he said, I like Gabber, but you might want to Google what that means. Oh, no. And I go, what? And he's like, it's not bad. He's like, I just think it means something in like EDM world. And I don't know if it's like a good thing or a bad thing. Okay. So Gabber is actually a music style of like hardcore techno. (laughs) (laughs) And it also is a way that they just dis- that people from like Amsterdam or something describe people like Gabber style or whatever. Like it means like a friend. Like it has a lot of different terms, but I'm like, you know what? I actually like that. But love that. But then I was like, well, now I have to listen to Gabber music. Oh no. So I literally just went in Gabber and just typed in Spotify and the first thing that came up was nineties Gabber classics. A classic. Who would have thought that Gabber fucking meant something other than like talking? In the nineties, crushed let, it. Let me just like show you what it sounds like. I'll play it from my laptop. Just so you can get a gist of Hardcore Gabber music. <laughs> no, literally, Carolyn, it's every song. It's every song. I'm not done. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, wait, this one's chill. I'm not doing that. That's so much. <laughs> <laughs> And Dan was literally like, you guys are going to have to get a new theme song. If you're the Gabbers, you're going to have to have one of these as your theme song. <laughs> like, imagine coming in like, boom, 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 boom. So to me, that makes me want to be a Gabber even more. I was going to say, I I was on the fence. Now I'm fucking sold. It's the wildest thing. That's so perfect. I love the like, that it describes a person. Like, that's fun. No, yeah. And the music that it describes is fucking nuts. And then, okay, yes. so then there's more. This whole Gabber Gabbity thing has created like such I a whirlwind. I keep waiting in our for the community. bomb to drop that it's like a porn thing. Oh no, no, no. That's that, that's it with it, what it means. Okay. But then someone messaged us because I, I put put like if you have any other suggestions, like type them in here. And someone wrote, "Please go see my DM because Sheena is being a weirdo." LOL. So I'm like, what the fuck? Her name is tink the one is who dm me so i go into the dms and she dms me and says and this girl is a real one right here she posts a screenshot of sheena's vlog and it says it was posted two days ago and it says gabbing about the valley finale summer house and more and this girl literally says is this a joke gabbing about the valley gabbing this seriously must be a joke you guys need to copyright this like this girl i literally was like you are such a fucking real one for get looking her address out for and send her some pairs That's i was amazing. like i was like thank you for looking out for us you're real one. i was like but this is something else i've learned recently that gabbing there is a podcast out there called gabbing with gib 
Oh. But okay. I did listen. Man, the information keeps my head as a ping pong. It's so fucking hard to keep up. I did do some research about it, though. I listened to some episodes. He doesn't really refer to his followers as gabbers. Okay. And also, gabbing is a fucking thing that you use yeah. to say that yeah. you're talking about something. Like, it's very common. So this girl, I was like, thank you so much. Like, I can't fault Man. her for this. And she still straight up was like, no, I think she listens to your podcast, blah, blah, blah. So, so Tink the One. Tink the One. Shout you, out to you. You're the best. You are the one. No, that you is are the one. But it, I just thought that was so awesome. Like, you guys really look out for us. Yeah, that's so fucking sweet. Okay, let's get into the real Gabbity Gab. What do you say? Let's hop on in. You want to start with Summer House? Did you watch the reunion? I did watch the reunion. I feel like it was mainly focused on, like it wasn't, part one wasn't as about Lindsay and Carl as I thought. I feel like it was a lot about Wes and Sierra. That was kind of some tea. Yeah. What do you think about that? I think that Wes has fallen victim to new reality fame. I think he just had no idea like what he was getting himself into. It's kind of like the Valley in that respect. Like it, he's just brand new to this. And I think everything is so shiny and exciting that he was like, well, I don't know. You know, if, if he gets Sierra within two seconds of walking into the house and who knows what else is out there, you know, I think he just got, he didn't realize the prize he initially got was a crazy fucking prize. Literally. Like, you could not get better. I am with you. I feel like maybe I have a hot take on this whole thing, but I think we need to cut him some slack. Mm -hmm. I don't think he went into that house with the intention of like, I'm going to get with the, I'm going to latch onto this girl, blah, blah, blah. Here's what I think happened. Exactly what you said. Shiny new thing. I think he went on this reality show. There was a hot girl. She was in him. He was in her. Then he probably felt stuck. Mm -hmm. Everybody loves her. She's been on the show for seasons. I just got here. Mm -hmm. Even if I want to end it, I can't. Mm -hmm. I do feel like, and I don't know if maybe he was just saying this more in his talking heads versus to her. He was pretty open about not really wanting to commit. Yeah. Where he fucked up though is bringing her home. To his oh, family. Huge. Why do men do that? Huge. And she called him out for that when he initially offered it for like Thanksgiving yes. or whatever. She's like, I can't tell what's a big deal with you or not. If you're not going to make me your girlfriend, don't fucking bring me, don't let me go sleep in your childhood bedroom. Yeah, what? Like, that's where he lost me. It's crazy how guys sometimes just get that so backwards. Yeah. Like that's less of a commitment to you than like, I don't know. I'm seeing your dinosaur sheets. Like, right, it's wild. Right, right. I'm seeing where you jerked off for the first time. Yeah, exactly. Like, like this is where the magic <laughs> happened. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's, but I think it's like, look, we have to like cut him some slack. They didn't work out. I, I feel like a lot of people are like crucifying him. And I know people are Sierra stands, but like, it is what it is. Like, it happened. It sucks. He like, did not present himself well. He... He could have benefited from media training. I'll say that yeah. much. It is he clear that, that he is not polished in these types of situations. This is the first time that he's been interviewed for all we know. I mean, besides his talking head. Yeah, he did just kind of started doing like podcasts and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, that like he's speaking live on the record that everything he says will be scrutinized by the entire country. Like that's a lot of pressure, but he fumbled the ball, I think. He did not make it seem, I mean... I don't know if we're supposed to feel sorry for him. He didn't he didn't seem that sorry about it. I think he was really nervous. I think like, he was really, when really Andy nervous. When Andy was saying hi to everyone, he was just like, hi, Andy. Yeah. I heard he was on um, a podcast called Turtle Time um, with Riley Hamilton, big TikTok guy. Nice. And I think he said on that, like, he will not even watch. He's not going to watch the reunion back. He said it was the worst experience of my life. Aww. I know it was a bad showing for me. I'm not going to watch it back. So I think he fell victim to, like, he fell victim to two things. He fell victim to, I'm on a reality show. This is amazing, big and shiny. Everybody loves us. My ego, blah, blah, blah. But then fell victim to not being able to differentiate his life to the reality show. Like Paige yeah. said, like, we do our things with cameras there, yeah. not because cameras are there. Like, yeah. And I think he just got excited and got yeah. ahead of himself and didn't really know how to handle either things. Yeah. And then the third thing he suffered from was the ums. I mean, oh, it was, was he just doing like, a lot of ums. Um, um, I mean, he just couldn't get words out. He couldn't put sentences together. But I mean, that goes to show he was just really nervous. Yeah. I'm going to be petty. The fourth thing he suffered from, bad middle part. Oh, well, he suffered from failed grooming like all season. And oh, you weren't a hair of the, 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 oh, the, the fan? You weren't a hair of the fan? 
<laughs> you weren't a fan of the hair? Spooner. Oh, look, I don't. The mustache, I just wasn't into. All I'm going to say is if I had a choice, I'm a Jesse Solomon girl. What would well, K, what would K Riccio do? K Riccio would do Jesse Solomon. What would every girl in America do? But sometimes I could see Jesse Solomon just being like the nerdy like exactly friend. why he's fucking amazing. Yeah, he's a cutie. That's what makes him the best of all worlds. But he was smart. Wes should have talked to. <laughs> That's <laughs> that what he did. That's what he Solomon. said. He got, yeah, <laughs> that was died. a good impression. Yeah, we're gonna need to perfect our other impressions now that we're talking about things That's other than true. Vanderpump. I need to get in front of the mirror ASAP. Yeah, but really perfect <laughs> the Jesse Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> so all Wes needed to fucking do was talk to any one of his friends, mm. specifically girlfriends, that watch reality TV and say, is it smart for me to hook up with a girl in the house? And they would do an astounding no. Well, of course it's not smart to hook up with a girl in the house, but when the girl's Sierra... Fair. But she's but, literally a model. She is the most beautiful human I know it's probably hard to deny, but like you just, you can't, you just can't. It never ends well. And on Bravo, it never ends well for the guy in, well, in today's world. That's true. The guy's got a lot of people. It never ends up well for anybody. Is there any couple? I mean, Kyle and Amanda are not doing great. Okay. Any couple that hooked up on TV. That are still happy. Well, like Paige and Andrea were like friendly. They hooked up in Winter House. But no, I mean that are still together. Oh. But that's true. But Paige is like a bad bitch. Paige is the best. I love Paige. God, she's really blossomed. It has been fun as a viewer to see her come into her own. You know what? I actually think Paige is a great example of living her life with cameras. Yeah. But being aware that she is being filmed. Mm -hmm. And she did this interview. I wish I knew exactly where it was. I don't know if it was on Giggly Squad or not, but she was like, you know, I have millions of young girls that listen to me and I need to be someone to set an example. Like she says something like, you know, we go to college and we, you know, get a job and blah, blah, blah. And like, I think it was in, in, in regard to like her marrying Craig. Like, mm -hmm. why would I then just let all that go down the drain because I want to get married? Like, I'm working towards a career. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stop everything I worked for to just marry someone. She said it way more eloquently than I just said and it. Way more pagey. Way more pagey with a little sass. But good for her. Yeah. But yeah, other than that, I can't think of a couple that has lasted from a hookup in real life we've had you marriages don't. and divorces i'm thinking of like challenge so are you talking about like people that hook up on reality tv and are still together yeah snooki and her husband but he was didn't he find her at like, him at like a club but it was on the show i mean they weren't on the show together yeah they no, weren't okay castmates. castmates okay castmates. castmates that have ended up Ellen, okay. there has to be one if you know viewers know one there Me has to be one example but I'm thinking of the challenge. I'm thinking of like Danny, Melissa. I mean, they got divorced. Oh, Zach and Jenna. Are they still together? They're married, yeah. Well, Zach is. Okay, okay. Zach, that is this is actually a great segue into challenge talk that yeah, we saw great, you guys all great. were like, yes, talk about the challenge. I love the challenge. Like, Which is great news for us, by the way. So I'm currently in, because I'm doing my first watch through. Zach's and I'm evil era? I'm in Zach and Jenna era where they're, I'm, I'm currently on invasion of the, champions or whatever mm. where jenna and zach are broken up but they're kind of like rebuilding things jenna i love jenna's great and i'm like why the fuck are you wasting your time with this guy you've seen he called women like sewer rats yeah. on tv or yeah. donkey rat or some weird ass thing he did <laughs> Is that what he said? No, he did. It was on. I remember him talking about like religion and it being like, yes. that's the whole point is that like Eve came from Adam, like a rib. Like, it was in the, it was, like it was literally in that same rant. Women, it so. was on X's, I believe. He was. Great season. He was uh, paired up with. John A. John A. Just hated her for no fucking reason. Oh, he was horrible Even though to he her. he ghosted her. He was horrible to her. The way that he would yell at her. I mean, it was Scary. And he goes on this whole rampage about how women are inferior to men and yeah. they took a rib out of Adam to make women. And mm -hmm. I, he literally calls them like donkey rats. The one thing about the challenge is it does not age well. No. If you go back in time, you watch some stuff and you're like, they were allowed to say that on TV? I try to have a bit of leniency when I do watch shows from back then because stuff was just way more It was a different time. Back then. It was a different culture. It was a different time. But there are some people 
people that really shouldn't have been allowed like back allowed on the back challenge. Yeah. ever yeah or like should be in jail or shouldn't be like praised now like like yeah. for example us praising Johnny Bananas last True, episode. I was just thinking about that. Damn it, I was. But you forget because it's like they were so young. It was so long ago. I know, but that doesn't excuse it. Okay, so speaking of Johnny Bananas, I did get to the end of Rivals Three. Okay, they're on big the, spoiler alert. Yeah, spoiler upcoming. But this t- took place fucking like eight years ago. They're on the top of the mountain. Johnny and Sarah win it all, first place. They have a chance to either. Well, here, let me do a quick backstory. They were rivals going into it. They really, because Sarah threw Johnny into an elimination the season before. Johnny lost. He had to leave. So he blamed Sarah for not winning money in that challenge. The next season, they're paired together. They're rivals. Sarah works so hard to rebuild their friendship. And they really rebuild. Like, it was like a cute platonic love story between them. I loved it. They get to the top of the mountain. And they Johnny gets to choose. Do you want to split the money you just won with Sarah? It was like $275,000. Or do you want to take it all? And he chose to take it all and leave her with nothing. First of all, even if he split it, they're still walking with a whopping amount of cash. But since he took it all to himself, he then became the first challenge player to win the most money. Mm -hmm. I see both sides. I know. I knew you wouldn't love that answer. I just don't get it. I don't get it. It's not the same. It is not fair. Sarah got him there. Like Johnny making it seem like it's the same thing to me as bananas. Sarah (laughs) did not. No pun intended. (laughs) God, you're so funny. (laughs) Hey, but you did it. I just completed it. Like she just put him into an elimination that he himself lost. So he had to go home. She did not take his money by any means. He had a chance to earn it just like everybody else that had to go do an elimination that earned their spot back on the show. It was very different than taking him through the entire season. They crushed. They dominated the season. They were really good together. They like were not speaking at the beginning. Johnny was really upset about the elimination thing. And by the end, they had just done so well and they'd like come back so far and without her, he would not have gotten that money. Yeah. they. I mean, it was a crazy hard final, too. They get up to the top of the mountain, and it's like he takes all of it, leaves her with nothing. She has student debt. She has, like, all this she stuff. She just got married. She just got married. Did I make up the student debt? She wants to go to grad school. She wants to go to grad school. She's going to use it for her education. Yeah. Like, it's just, oh, it broke my heart. And Sarah's also had the storyline of being kind of bullied yes. um, on the challenge and kind of seen as, like, a nerdy underdog yes. and so I've always rooted for the underdog and always rooted for her to get so far and here she has and Johnny just pushed her back down where she started I love Sarah yeah so that's why I'm saying I see both sides because in the season before they were in an alliance together but they were on separate teams they were not partners mm-hmm. so at the end of the day they were gonna verse each other no were, matter what there were what four Four left? There were four left. There there were only... So in, in the challenge... Four teams left. In the challenge, you kind of stay with your alliances as far as you can until it no longer... You no longer can. No, but they could have thrown someone in that wasn't in their alliance. But I, it was... It's too... But by that point, you're at who's going to take the money point. Like, I feel like it's past the point of, oh, well, we should save them. I don't know. I felt like it was too far. Right. So I I totally obviously see Sarah's side. Like, I'm more team Sarah. Like, Like, that's crazy. Like, they were partners. He would not have been there at all if it wasn't for her like Mm -hmm. he can't use the excuse I don't owe her anything because he owes not that he did I'm just saying like he owes her everything yeah because arguably she won a lot of challenges for them with puzzles and stuff because she's super smart but he was so hurt by what she did to him which one I think a little dramatic so dramatic like calm down I feel like maybe there's some underlying things there like if he truly felt the level of betrayal he was portraying, and if Sarah does say things like all is fair and love worn challenges, then I could see why he would think like, okay, if all is fair and love worn challenges, because Sarah does say that you did this, you took away, you could have basically, she could have given him a free ride to the final. And then they duke it out in the final. She chose to put him in the elimination. He lost, he goes home. So he blames her 
Because he would have went to the final. But here's the other important factor we're not putting into it. It wasn't just her. But that season, you are competing in pairs. So it was a team decision. No, it wasn't though. Because when I just, oh, I just watched you it, just which watched, is the only no, reason I why I know. You, I trust you, trust So she was paired up with Jordan. Right. And they had to make the decision on the spot. They just won the challenge. They had to make the decision on the spot. Who are you throwing in? I wish I could remember who the other option was. I think it was like maybe Leroy and someone else. Leroy and Naya maybe. Yeah. Or it was like Jenna and someone. Jordan is like, I yeah, we're going to throw in whoever it was. They knew who it was going to be. And Sarah just looks at him and she goes, no. Is that how it went down? Yeah, and and they're fighting in it's front the, of the everyone. Selective memory. They're fighting in front of everyone, and Jordan is like, "Sarah, no!" And Sarah's like, "We have to do it. We have to do it. We have to do this." She basically begs him, and then while she's begging him, Johnny Bananas is behind her, going, "Sarah, don't do this." I remember that. Sarah, please don't do this. And then they threw in Johnny. So like, it was kind of intense. Okay, I take it back. That was a very, uh, very opposite of what I was saying. That was a very but intentional still, throw in. I still <laughs> think it was really <laughs> fucked up for him to do that. Yeah. Oh God. I mean, it fucks with her future. And and he even. I mean, he jokes about it to this day. I forget where what like some show that he's on. House of Villains. They when he points about to the house. house and he goes, "That's the house that Sarah helped me buy." Or oh. Something, you know. I think I think he actually did that in the following see or a couple seasons after that yeah they he had like, like he a camera yeah. light of it. but they talk about it a lot in house of villains because he made it to the very end of house oh spoiler alert he makes it to the end of house of villains and he's with this other woman and he's like trying to like plead I his was case shocked that he did that i think he felt like he had to i don't remember exactly what happened basically he he had a vote and he could have voted the person that was most likely to win out or something oh, to yes. that effect. He could choose to take someone to the end with him that he that everyone hated. I feel like it was like Shake from Love is Blind. <laughs> or he could have brought, I wish yeah, I, remember, I wish her I name, remember her name, but too. she's from Bad Girls Club. He's trying to convince Anfisa from 90 Day Fiance. The most Bad random girl, fucking cast. Anfisa. Most random fucking cast. I loved that show. I did. I like 90 Day Fiance too. Yeah. God, we well, could just talk about. Oh, you're talking home. about House of Villains. I'm, well, both. 90 Day Fiance, I fucking love. God, we could just talk about things for days. All day. But he's trying to convince Anfisa and he's like convincing her that he's going to bring the girl from Bad Girls Club and he goes, what do you think I'm going to do? Like if I bring Shake, I'm just going to be like stealing the the her chance to win a bunch of money. And Anfisa looks at him and she goes, you literally did that before. Yeah. You've stolen women's money before. Yeah. So I feel like he felt like he had to. Yeah. And I feel like by this point, he has a lot of money. He has revenue streams. Yeah. He like he's a he's doing well for himself. He does, It's not as much of a money situation. that I think he could afford to do that. Yeah. So I, I look. Again, I see both sides. I think what he did is fucked up. But from a reality TV fan, fucking legendary good television. Legendary good television. He you is, can't argue with that. Johnny Bananas is someone who lives because the cameras are there. Yeah. Like yeah. West Wilson. Yeah. Not He doesn't live with the cameras. He lives because of the cameras. Yeah. And I'll say, Kyle, my husband... Totally in this situation, he totally is with Johnny Bananas. He thinks it, Sarah doesn't deserve it, like, at all. And we get into fights so about it. So what's his, like... Well, Sarah did it first. It at the end of the so day, he just though. goes back to, well, Sarah, Sarah did it first. And I'm this, like, she didn't, though. This is what Devin was saying in the finale, which I think Devin is fucking annoying. But because <laughs> I watched Are You the One, I know he's like, good. he's in more of the challenge. I've only seen him on one season, but I didn't like him on Are You the One. And he, but he did make a good point. He was like, it's not the same thing solely based on she wasn't your fucking partner. And stole your money. You guys were not partners. You were opponents. Yeah. She was playing the game how it's supposed to be played. Exactly. Like, I don't know. I would never fucking trust him. And I heard Sarah has not done a challenge since. No, she hasn't. That's sad. It's sad. I don't know that I would be able to either. Like, my mental health would be gone. Oh, no. Bless her heart. And she'd already come from some... Ugh. Yeah. Any, anyway. Anyhow. That's how I feel about it. If you guys want to know. Uh, okay, Carolyn, can you please debrief our gabbers on what the fuck has been going on with Billy Lee, Victoria <laughs> Lee Robinson, Kyle Chan? Like, I feel like there's so much shit. Okay, first of all, can I just say that I, I want to sign a petition to have people, like, to have reality stars do on shows what they do on their podcasts. <laughs> I would sign that. As many times like, as I'd be allowed to. Like, what the fuck is going on? These podcasts are more dramatic than, like, stuff that's happening on the show. Yes. And there's, like, 
I mean, firing shots. It's a Western out there. So I watched, I didn't watch all of them. So I can't like recap the whole thing. So Billy Lee makes accusations that Victoria Lee and Tom are very toxic, that she drinks all the time or ta- and they drink all the time together, do a lot of drugs, went and messed with Ariana's stuff and didn't trust Billy Lee, said that they thought they were sleeping together. Then Kyle Chan and Victoria Lee Robinson go on Up and Adams. And which is another podcast I'd never listened to. I thought it was going to be Wells Adams podcast. Oh. Because, because Wells Adams was a DJ in Nashville and his show was mm-hmm. called Up, Up and Adam. Oh. Um, Up and Adam with Wells Adams. True story. And um, Great name. They basically, it's hilarious. You can tell Victoria Lee hasn't really done many interviews. She was very, very nervous. She brings up that she was in a car crash. And she says, she brings up that she was in a car crash and that's why she speaks the way that she speaks. She sometimes Because stutters. she did, because Billy Lee accused her of slurring her words. She was like, you can, she'll call you at 2 p.m. and mm-hmm. she's slurring her words and Victoria says, you know, I was in this car crash and that's why I talk the way that I talk. I do feel like she had Kyle Chan as a buffer well the whole thing was so funny because i mean kyle chan also just isn't the best at interviews like neither of them are really interview people this felt like a tom said you should do this thing i don't think they would do it otherwise okay but they think that billy lee starts saying all this now because tom is in scotland or whatever the fuck doing traders so he can't respond so i don't think i actually think if anything Tom would have told them not to. Oh, I don't know. I feel like interviews have just gone south for that man. And I would hope he would know by now he to doesn't. maybe just wait till it dies down. He made an own podcast making the fun of the fact that everyone no, hates true. him. You know, just when I start to have like a positive thought. He doesn't. I do not think. Do you really see Kyle Chan? I mean, we don't know him that well, to be fair. But do you see him being calling up Victoria Lee and saying, let's get on a podcast and let's get your side of the story out there? And well, I guess if any, I could see Victoria Lee maybe doing it. So Kyle I Chan. think there were bits of, because I didn't listen to the whole Billy Lee podcast there were a lot of accusations about Kyle Chan there was accusations that Kyle was obsessed with Tom Mm -hmm. and there were accusations that Kyle has even drugged Tom in the past yeah did I say that on the podcast I know I don't know if it was said on the podcast or one of or one of Billy's many Instagram stories she's been posting TikToks like she's going on a rampage Victoria Lee was saying that she said that Oh, so maybe Billy never said it publicly. Fair. Because that's what, because she was saying there was a camera there. She kept saying, it was not linear. Her storytelling is very bad. Yeah. But she was saying there was a camera there when Billy Lee says, hey girl, don't trust Kyle Chan. He drugs Tom and has tried to like take advantage of him that way. Oh, they did say there was a camera there. But it wasn't recording. But it recording. wasn't recording. Because they kept, they brought it up like 20 minutes later. They're like, but there was a camera there. And she's like, oh, it didn't work. Yeah. <laughs> I think that. So, oh, it doesn't work. So here's what I know. Maybe this will help. I know a little bit about this Adam guy from Up and Adam. Because mm-hmm. I follow him on TikTok. And I've listened to him. Actually, I've only listened to a couple episodes of one of your favorite podcasts, Juicy Scoop. Oh, and I he, love Juicy and Scoop. And he was on an episode. And I think he used to work at Sir. Well, he is a, was a Wilhelmina model. Thank you. He, so did, he did mention, he, he did, did slide, he did that, slide in that in there that he was so a, what is it, Wilhelmina? Wilhelmina. Wilhelmina model. So I do think he is like, he kind of knows this crew a little bit. Mm-hmm. A lot of people were thinking like, were basically saying like, why are you giving them this platform? Mm-hmm. I think that he knows, probably knows Kyle Chan personally. And I bet you he reached out to them and was like, I want to be, and was like, I want to be the one to break this story. I want to be the one to respond because it was on a fucking YouTube live, which, go ahead. I bet, I bet he didn't pitch it like that. I bet he pitched, you deserve to get your side of the story out there. You can't just let this happen. They're going to keep going. She's going to keep going. Say your side. Yes. Come on my podcast. So I was the luckiest girl in the fucking world. I was like, you know what? I want to do some yoga in my backyard. So I go in my backyard. (laughs) I open my laptop. I go to YouTube to type in yoga. What pops up right on the top? Live, currently. I was literally from the beginning. I was like one of the first one in there. And Billy Lee was watching it live and was commenting on the video. Yes, So I was reading that as well. I couldn't listen to the whole fucking thing because I was trying to do my yoga. Yeah, it's not very relaxing. (laughs) I literally was like, maybe I can do yoga while I listen to this. Yeah, no. But I was like, I just know that it's people are going to be posting clips and stuff and whatever. So the big key points were Billy said Kyle's obsessed with Tom. They... 
accused Kyle of drugging Tom. Kyle and Victoria say that Billy Lee asked Sandoval for his sperm and his last name. They then say this is very timely because Billy is about to go on tour and Sandoval is filming traitors. So Sandoval can't respond. And now Billy is even posting things like, oh, well, if you're going to say I'm doing this for tour, then I'm going to spill tea at each one of my tour dates that I go on. And now she's like posting that. They're posting like, Things of like, now Victoria's posting like, Billy, why are you so obsessed with me? Like, now it's just becoming like a petty it's dumb fight. It's going back and forth. And the internet is 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 saying one of two things. Like, one, who gives a fuck? Stop, like, like, yeah. like stop trying to be relevant. Or bring cameras back up. This should be the next season of Vanderpump Rules. Yes. Do you feel that, that you would like to watch something like this? Uh, based on Victoria Lee Robinson's performance, I don't know how much I'd like how much I'd want to see it. And I also don't know why, how much I want to watch Billy Lee, actually, yeah. now that I think about it. Victoria was very um, Raquel-coded. Yes. Like, the way she yes. talked. Oh, and, and the way, oh, that, that they, str- I mean, I think it is a straight-out, flat, blasphemous lie that um, she says she doesn't think that Billy Lee and Tom hooked up because she, or no, Kyle doesn't think that they've hooked up because he would have told him. They have, I guarantee you, have discussed the very public plot point of Billy Lee and Tom Sandoval at some point of their, what, nine-year relation- friendship? Yeah. Like, this is not just the first time that ever someone has asked him, like, have they hooked up? They have been... Like, he knows what to say. They, Tom has told him what to say. They, he's told Victoria what to say. Like, they have been primed, just like Ariana would be for reunions, Raquel was for reunions. That it, That's how it came off to me. Yeah, and Victoria, like also just was like you know I can't help who I fall in love with and I fell in love with Tom and blah 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 whatever Tom did respond and his response was he posted an Instagram story about it like I guess like the next day so people are either like they let him get his phone back a PR person did it or he's already booted off the traders and the response says Billy Lee's false claims towards Victoria Lee Robinson and Kyle Chan were designed to damage our friendship and relationship Victoria Kyle and I heard her on speakerphone while she made those accusations they were designed to isolate me from my close friends for ulterior motives it is not a coincidence that she is doing this while I am out of the country and she is on tour I will be addressing everything when I'm back And then actually Katie Maloney commented on it and said, Tom, the truth teller, LOL, this shit is exhausting. It is. And that's the word, Katie. It's exhausting at this point. But those are crazy accusations to go back and forth that you're like, what do I believe at this point? It is crazy. And now Billy Lee is saying, I don't regret my friendship with Tom. But I do regret how I treated Ariana because now she's like backtracking. Like she's like, I should have been team Ariana. I would like she now has absolutely no clout. Well, she's has clout by saying all this. I think I mean, it's also kind of clear that this benefits her by bringing all this up. She's going on tour. It does give her relevancy. Like it's going to be a 15 minutes of fame it's, yeah. to throw someone that you at one point called a best friend under the bus this fucking hard proves to me that you guys never had a real friend. Like, it doesn't matter. I have had friends that we've had falling out. They fucked me over, blah, blah, blah. I would never like, like, she's not just saying like little things. No. She's airing shit the she's fuck like out. She's accusing like sexual assault. I and mean, drug use. Yeah. And like, it's like, it's a bit, it's not a good look. Granted, I'm eating it all up. Yeah, here we are talking about it. But (laughs) it is good chit chat. But it's just I'm now at a point where it was like Billy said her thing. They said their thing. I don't it's a lot of back and forth now and it's just petty. And again, I love it, but it's just I don't know. I've honestly kind of stopped following it. I don't really even know what's going on now. I don't know. I just tried to listen to both of the podcasts today. I was I was pretty dumbfounded at all of it happening. So crazy. And that Joe, my gosh, was also there. Joe being there is not even being the craziest part is the craziest part. (laughs) And then she was crying again. Just so it was so weird. Like, are you crying? She's like, (laughs) what will Joe do next? What will Joe do next? Well, the podcast circuit can only go for so long. Obviously, she's only being allowed on Raquel and Billy's. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> it's a clo- It's a very small circuit. Like, she's just going to keep bopping <laughs> back and forth. It's like the, the Savannah Bananas. There's only like 
three teams in that league. Yeah, they just so all play each other. This, first of all, you love the Savannah Bananas. I fucking Bananas. love this the Savannah This is not Bananas. the first time you've <laughs> met. Okay, for those that don't know, please tell, enlighten us about the Savannah Bananas. You know the Savannah Bananas. They're the the... I don't even know what league of baseball they're technically called because they're not major. It's like not a college not league. Minor. It's not. Yeah, I don't know what they are. Either. It's like this in between league where there's only like three teams and they dance and they have fun and do silly things. But they're also like good at baseball and they have like fun trick baseball plays and they do like all these silly songs and they're really hot. And like, I love them. I have one of my shows. I know the coach was in the audience and I went up to him afterwards and I was like, thank you for the work you do. It's really important work. It is. I get so much joy out of all this, but anyways, that's a a segue. I, I, okay. So yeah, I just had to look them up. The bananas now field two teams. They have the Savannah bananas and the party Party animals. animals. Yeah. And this says, the Savannah Bananas are an exhibition barnstorming baseball team. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? Barnstorming. Did you listen to any of Jackson Brittany's podcast? I have not, but I heard it's been juicy. It is juicy and just odd and very stereotypical Jax and Brittany. Um, I didn't listen to the end, which is like going to be the best part because Kristen Doty's on it. Jax essentially is not taking accountability for anything. They're both talking about the situation. Apparently, they're still living apart, but she'll sometimes stay over and it works for them. And Jax still just what what boggles my mind is like he still talks and it's it's funny because we're doing the Vanderpump's rewatch so we want I just watched the pilot and then listened to this podcast same exact person Carolyn I had the same thought he yeah he even talks the same talks the exact same and literally says the same crazy audacious things of like you know maybe I think I, I might have taken some things for granted in our marriage you think yeah or like yeah I, I mean I think I have a little work to do you think like but Jax. You know, how look I am so fucking team Britney it's insane but how can he really take Britney seriously if the only thing that's changed in their marriage is that she just like doesn't sleep there sometimes uh, that's like what's true. different like what the fuck is different like they're still doing their podcast she's still around I bet she's still doing things for him it's like it, it, it pisses me off that they're still doing this podcast together well, they did say that you know in Jax's rant that what you know he was talking about how the, the un- unconventional might not work for you but it works for us like we're trying every last thing before we actually like divorce and he listed some things and one of them was you know we're trying to date other people so he did say that so they are dating other people so he won't go to therapy but he'll date other people oh and he mentions therapy what does he say about it either he went to to it he said he had a breakdown at, at some bar to some therapist or something and like that he has all these anger issues and all this stuff is what Jax does all the time that he admits that yeah I've got so much work to do man like epiphany and then he just does and goes the same thing again yeah so I wish him that. the best we wish him the best well, yeah I have to listen to see what T. Kristen spills. Yeah. It really is kind of a shame the lack of, like, the Valley pitch that this was, like, Kristen's big comeback, and, like, we've seen her for, like, two episodes. She was hardly on it. Hardly. Yeah. You did briefly mention this, and I want to plug it again. We are doing a Vanderpump Rules rewatch from the start. Pilot. From the pilot. And we are going to recap it after we record this episode. So we just watched the pilot, and I am... I have so much to say. I have so much to say. Should we just go do it now? Let's go do it. All right, let's go record it. And say, it. say goodbye and thank you. But goodbye, but we'll see you on but the we'll see you Vanderpump there. episode. We'll be, we'll be right back. Like, you guys, it's like, you don't even need to watch the episode. We're going to bring you through the whole thing. It's all going to come back. It, you're going to be blown away. It's Shakespeare. Literally. Done. Well, thank you for so much for listening to the weekend two of our Gabbity Gab. We love you guys so much. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Girls Unscripted Pod, YouTube, Spotify, Apple. You know the drill. You know it. Like, subscribe, leave comments. It all helps. All right, let's go recap Vanderpump Rules. Here we go. Rewinding time. <laughs> don't judge us for that. Bye. Bye. Bye.